Laravel has become one of the most popular PHP frameworks, and there's a good reason for that. Laravel is the easiest way to create a web application from front to back. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Laravel to build web applications. We're going to do this in a quick 12 minute video, so we better get started. Here's an outline of the 12 topics we'll be covering. Let's kick things off by showing you how to install a Laravel application. To install a Laravel application on your local machine, you'll want to visit herd.laravel.com and you can download the native app for Mac or Windows. Then simply run through the installation steps and you're ready to go. To test this out, we can open up a command prompt and run Laravel dash dash version. This will display the version of the Laravel installer on our machine. You'll also have a new folder located at your home directory slash herd. This is where you are going to install all of your Laravel applications. So now that we have this Laravel command, we can create a new Laravel application by running Laravel new, and we'll just call this my app. We'll say no, we don't want to install a starter kit, and we'll just select the defaults throughout the installer. We can then cd into that folder and type composer run dev. And visiting myapp.test in the browser, you'll have a new Laravel application ready for you to create your masterpiece. Opening your app, you'll see the following folder structure. So the app is where your models, controllers, and most of your logic will live. We then have your configuration files, your database files, your resources, which is where your views, blade files, CSS, and JavaScript will live. We have your routes, which is where you define all the URLs for your application. Storage contains uploaded files, logs, and cache files. Tests are for your application tests. The vendor folder contains your PHP dependencies. Then going to the files, there are only a few that I'm going to cover. We'll start with the composer.json. This is what defines your PHP dependencies, and the package.json is what contains your JavaScript dependencies. Lastly is your .env, and this is a very important file. This file contains a lot of the environment variables for your application, including your app name, security keys, and more. And that is your application folder structure. Next, let's finally start building by adding some routes to our application. To access our routes, we can go to routes web.php. By default, Laravel includes a home route that loads a welcome view which can be found in the resources views folder. This is the file that gets rendered when we visit the home route. Let's go ahead and define a new route. I'm gonna create a new route and I'm gonna call this hello. And instead of this returning a view, I'm just gonna have this return text. So we'll just say hello Laravel. Now, if we go back to our application and go to myapp.test slash hello, sure enough, we get the hello Laravel. So our routes can return a view, they can return text, or they could also map to a controller. There are also a few other methods that you could use. You could use route put, route post, route patch, and route delete. Be sure to check out the documentation to learn more about those. Next, we are going to explore artisan commands. Opening up your app in a command line and typing in PHP artisan will list out all the artisan commands that you can run. Here's an example of how we can create a view using Artisan. I can now look in my resources views folder and I have a new orders file right here. And then I can create a new route to map to that view. And a quick tip, you can also use the route colon colon view to map a route to a view. Now, if we were to visit our application URL at slash orders, we'll see that that route serves up that view. Be sure to check out the documentation on Artisan because it has a bunch of cool tools that can save you a lot of time. Laravel provides a templating engine called Blade that lets us do some really cool stuff. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove the route view and just use a route get to our orders and then pass a variable to our orders view. Then inside of our Blade view, we can easily print out the name with the curly braces. Another thing that we can do with Blade is we can create dynamic layouts. So I'm going to create a new folder inside of my resources, views, components, layouts, and I'm going to call this file app.blade.php. Now I have a snippet that I'm just going to paste in here, and this essentially just has a header and then it has the main content. Then inside of our orders view, we can use that layout. 
So now if we view the page in the browser, you'll see that this view extends that layout and we can reuse this layout with any other view. This just scratches the surface of all the cool things you can do with Blade. Check out the documentation. You can learn how you can do if conditions, loops, switches, and much more. So far, we've been handling everything inside of our routes web.php. But as our app grows, keeping logic in routes can get messy. And that's where controllers come in. Let's create an order controller using Artisan. This will create a controller inside of our app, HTTP controllers folder. You can see we have our orders controller right here. For now, let's create a simple index method. And we'll just use that same logic to return the orders view with the name of Tony. Jumping back into our web.php, we can then replace this route and say that we want the orders route to go to the order controller. And of course, we'll also need to define the full path to the order controller up here at the top. Then visiting our app at our slash orders route, we have the exact same output, except now we are using controllers. Migrations let us define database tables in code. We can check out our current migrations if we go to database migrations, and you'll see we have a few migration files inside of this folder. One of them is the users table. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete these additional migrations, and then I'm going to delete everything except for our users table. Now let's create a migration called orders. And after creating that migration, I now have a new file right here. And if I go into this, you can see that we have this up method, and this gets executed when we run our migrations. Now by default, the table will have an ID, and I have a few columns that I'm just going to paste in here, which is called a foreign ID to a user ID and a product name. Now let's go ahead and run these migrations. And then I'm going to go ahead and open up my SQLite file. I'm using table plus, but you can use any database application. So we have our orders table and we have our users table. Quick tip, if you're following along in this video and you get the following error, you'll want to open up your .env file, look for session driver and change it from database to array. And then you can reload and that error will go away. You can think of a factory like a real world factory that produces products on an assembly line. But in Laravel, a factory generates data for us. So in this case, our user factory can create a few users for us. To generate a few users, we can open up our command prompt and we're going to use a new artisan command called Tinker. And Tinker is an interactive shell that allows us to run PHP commands. So I can run user factory create and we'll now have a new user in our database. Let's go ahead and run that command again so we have two users. Now, if we jump into the database and we check out our current users, we can see that we now have those two users in our database. Now, what I want to do is I want to demonstrate relationships to you eventually, so I want to add a few products in our users table. Now, I've quickly added a few products in here, and you can see that two of the products belong to user ID of one, and one product belongs to user ID of two. Next, let's interact with this data using models. In Laravel, models represent database tables and they allow us to interact with the data using an eloquent syntax. By default, every Laravel app has a users model located in the app models user directory. Now, if we open up Tinker, we can easily fetch the first user from the database using this model. Now let's create a new model for our orders table. And now that we've created that new model, we can fetch any orders from the database using the order model. When we fetch data using our models, that is referred to as eloquent. Let's cover that next. Eloquent is the syntax that we use to fetch data from the database. Let me go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. Let's open up the order controller. Here, I'm going to get our orders. And I'm gonna say that I want to get all of the orders. And I can do that with order, colon, colon, all. And we also need to make sure that we include the namespace up here at the top. But first, I'm going to also use a different syntax. I'm going to say where this user ID is equal to one. We want to get all of those orders. And then let's go ahead and pass it to the view. So now if I open up the orders view, I can easily add a blade for each loop to loop through all of our orders. And viewing this in the browser, we get the product names for the user. But instead, if we wanted to just get all of the orders, we can just say order all. And coming back here into orders, I'm just going to take off the name. 
and we'll list out all of the orders that we have in the database. So Eloquent makes it really easy to fetch data from your database using a really eloquent syntax. Using Eloquent, we can also set up very simple relationships. So every order belongs to a user. So we can add a method here called user, and we will say that this order belongs to a specific user. Then inside of our user model, we can create a method called orders. And this means that a user has many orders. Now, if we jump into our orders view, we can easily add who this order belongs to by using order user name. So now if we jump over to our application, we can see all the orders and who they were ordered by. Now, the last thing we're gonna talk about is route model binding, which lets Laravel automatically fetch a model instance from a route parameter. Let me go ahead and show you. We're gonna create a new route and we're gonna pass in curly braces order. This is going to map to a show method in our order controller. Let's go ahead and create that method. And you'll see as a parameter, we are passing order. So this is automatically going to fetch the order from the database. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste this orders view here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just paste a snippet in here. And this snippet just lists out the order details with the product name and who it was ordered by. So now check this out. If we go to our application, we go to orders slash one, you'll see that we get the order details. We can also do order slash two, and we get those order details. And that's the basics of route model binding. Okay, that wraps it up. Uh, thank you for hanging out with me for 12 minutes. And I hope that you will dig into the Laravel documentation more because we've just scratched the surface of all the cool stuff you can do with Laravel.